Welcome in everyone, James here and in this video I'm going to be talking about gauntlets. Now the gauntlets, they look really complicated if you go in game and look at them, all the nodes that you have to upgrade and stuff, it is a lot. It's a lot to get your head around but I'm going to simplify it and I'm going to make it easy to understand and hopefully help you choose the right gauntlet for you. The first thing that I want to get out of the way is rarity. Now, the rarity of the gauntlets is completely irrelevant. I don't even know how they got assigned the rarities that they have assigned. I think my dog had just guessed. I think they just guessed. They're just like, oh, that one looks like it should be unique. So let's make that one unique. And they just graded it based on the skin that they've got. I don't even know what they did but in terms of usefulness and in terms of gameplay the rarities that the gauntlets have is completely irrelevant completely ignore it now the last video that i did was the tier list video and in that video i talk about classes a lot and how to choose your own class and the pros and cons of each of the classes now the easiest way that i can explain gauntlets to you is that they can be divided by class the same thing goes for gauntlets as it does your build each class has two gauntlets and generally it's got one good gauntlet and one not so good gauntlet every single class except the mage class now the mage gauntlets do not follow the rule because the mage gauntlets work differently they work off of your weapon you need a weapon set up to use them but you can use them for any class all the other classes they follow the rule that there's two gauntlets for each class and one is better than the other so up on the screen now i have got the gauntlets divided into their classes and it tells you which one is the good one and which one is the not so good one but why are they in the classes that they're in now the most important node to upgrade on every single gauntlet except the mage class is the hero speed okay that when you are choosing a gauntlet it depends on the hero speed because the hero speed will help you gain rage faster if you are an alchemist then the chaotic gauntlet will help you gain rage faster by using alchemist heroes and every single class in the game works the same except mage because it doesn't follow the rules every class has one gauntlet where if you use the correct heroes with it the ones that it speed boosts you will get extra rage from using their power. So I'm going to show you the alchemist gauntlets on the screen now. I've got the chaotic on the left and holy on the right, okay? When you level up the rage gain node on the chaotic gauntlet and the hero speed node, the chaotic gauntlet will give you more rage when you use it with alchemist heroes. And it charges rage from any hero power, base power, rage power from any hero, doesn't matter. The holy gauntlet however it only charges rage from powers that heal you and it doesn't matter if you use alchemist or any other hero you don't get any bonus rage you get what it says on the screen and now since i'm talking about the holy gauntlet let's have a look at the other nodes on there i have seen a lot of people basing their gauntlet choice on the wrong things particularly with this gauntlet so you've got the sword boost you've got the warrior boost and you've got the holy rage damage boost which by the way doesn't work with half of the holy heroes because it only boosts rages that deal damage and half the holy heroes don't even deal any damage and a lot of people base their choice for this gauntlet around the fact that it's got sword boost but those three boosts that i just mentioned should be seen as just a little bit extra that's just a little buff that you will get if your setup happens to align with it when you are using it for the fight that you're using it for you should base your choice of gauntlet around how quickly and how efficiently your main setup will gain rage with it and this brings me on to the rage gain heroes now i know 90 percent of people will say but brotus fills up the holy gauntlet in one base power but that's just because he's an alchemist and he heals you okay he fills up the chaotic gauntlet as well but the, the problem with Brutus and the other Rage Gain heroes comes when you're in a fight that you need delay or that you need cleanse. Now your main hero should be your weakened hero for Alchemist, that is Grim. 
Okay, so you're going to have Grim and then you're going to have Brutus. But when you're in a situation that you need delay or that you need cleanse or that you need any other effect in the game, you're not going to be able to use Brutus. So basing your entire build around a rage gain hero is in the long run going to set you back massively. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you learn how to gain rage without a rage gain hero because you're going to be better off when the game puts you into those situations and now moving on on the screen we have got the hunter gauntlet the logician gauntlet you get more rage if you use it with hunters that cause a status they have to cause a status it's not just any power like the chaotic gauntlet if you use the logician gauntlet with a hunter hero that causes a status you will get more rage than if you use a non-hunter hero that causes a status and the logician gauntlet is the best naturally rage gaining gauntlet in the game all you have to do is use two base powers from hunter heroes that cause statuses so so that's for example lukin and caliban and if you use their base powers it will be nearly full you only have to punch once and then you've got rage again and then if you use a rage power that causes a status it's going to be half full so yeah it is an absolute beast the warriors have the valiant gauntlet which it only charges up from base powers, but it charges up at the same rate as the Chaotic Gauntlet if you use it with Warrior Heroes. The fact that it only charges up from base powers means that it's not as effective as the Chaotic Gauntlet, but it is a good one. And then for the Rogues, we have the Lawful Gauntlet. What can I tell you about the Lawful Gauntlet? It's one of the hardest to unlock in the game. You need to get 50,000 gems to unlock it, and um, it's not great. It's not great. The rage condition for this gauntlet is the same as the chaotic gauntlet. You have to use any power from any hero, but you do get more rage when you use it with rogue heroes, so there is that. And the mage gauntlets, you've got the maverick gauntlet, which gains rage from crits, and you've got the rebel gauntlet, which gains rage from you getting buffs. Now, both of these gauntlets rely on a triangle weapon, which in my guide, I teach you how to build the weapon for the maverick gauntlet with protect and focus the rebel gauntlet works in exactly the same way but it just doesn't gain rage as quick right, so both of those they are the exception to the rule and they work on what kind of weapon you have and they will work with any class and then you've got the three gauntlets that don't work like that or don't work from your weapon they work from what your enemies are doing to you and that is the dark gauntlet the champions gauntlet and the maniacal gauntlet okay the dark gauntlet is a warrior speed gauntlet so it speeds up the warriors but it's not great there are some situations where it is viable um but most of the time if you do use it you will be using it with queen Kreia, the warrior rage gain hero and it charges rage when enemies use powers on you so that's not ideal really anyway because you don't really want the enemies using their powers on you most, most of the time if it's a strong power you'll be wanting to delay it and stuff so yeah it's not great for general use unfortunately and then there's the champions gauntlet a lot of people recommend to new players to level up the champions gauntlet i do not i recommend the chaotic gauntlet just because it's better but the champions gauntlet it gains eight percent rage when you get hit every time you get hit so there are some um dod flaws where the boss summons a bunch of enemies that hit you twice and then it kind of it is pretty useful in there but it speeds up rogues and it gains rage passively it's not great in my opinion because you don't really want to be getting hit and in the end game when you do have a few leveled up you won't find much use for this gauntlet at all really and then finally we have got the maniacal gauntlet now the maniacal gauntlet is pretty bad overall but it gains rage when you have a negative status applied to you so that's uh, burn acid poison unfocus weaken or expose if any of those get applied to you it will gain rage now there's one place in the game one event in the game today where this gauntlet is actually really useful and that is lost sands because when you hit the enemies they put negative statuses on you they put burn acid 
or poison on you just from you hitting them and it is a hunter speed gauntlet okay so there's only two cleanse heroes in the game that cleanse negative statuses and that is azar and tristan so if you have azar you will put him with a mage speed gauntlet and he charges up in three moves and then you'll never need to use this tactic at all but if you don't have azar Okay, you can level up the Maniacal Gauntlet because you get the Maniacal Gauntlet pretty early. It's pretty easy to unlock. You can level up the Hunter Speed and the Rage Gain on the Maniacal Gauntlet and then pair it with Tristan. Tristan will charge up in five moves with a Hunter Speed Gauntlet and he cleanses you and protects on Max Star. Just the same as Azar, except Tristan is green, so it's a lot easier to get him to max star, and you can farm to get him to max star pretty easily. So yeah, if you don't have Azar unlocked, it's worth it to invest in the Maniacal Gauntlet. Just the Rage Gain and the Hunter Speed are the ones that I'd recommend. And level up Tristan a bit if you want, but level 1 is fine as long as he is max stars. And you'll be able to cleanse and he will give you protect as well, which is a lifesaver in that event. And we don't know what's coming in Atlantica. I've been reading the sneak peeks that they've been putting out and they said they said this, which had me thinking about the Lost Sands mechanic. So it might work a little bit similar to that. So the Maniacal Gauntlet might just come into its own. Obviously, we don't know until it comes out. And I'm just speculating here. But anyway, that's it from me. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it helps you choose the right gauntlet for you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I have been James B09. Good luck out there.